Okay, I, I'm live. So, I was wandering around Melbourne this afternoon, had a dentist appointment, and wanted to, wanted to kill a few minutes before I headed off to the, to the dentist. I was walking through a bunch of these laneways over in Melbourne, and I decided to take a photograph, a bunch of photographs along the way. I also picked up some paper from an art supply store along the way. So I got like these larger sheets of one quarter size papers. You can see here, it's pretty, pretty large. I couldn't even get it 100% to fit uh, into the camera frame. There's a couple of, it's like a centimeter off at the bottom and top, but I think it's going to be okay. We're going to be able to get in most of what. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to see what's going on. But I wanted to do something a little bit larger and kind of attempt this particular scene. It is quite complicated, as you can see. So much going on in here. But uh, seeing as I live in Melbourne and we've got some nice weather at the moment, I thought I'd take this opportunity to paint a few more local subjects. And here it is. Here it is. So I've actually enlarged the reference photo to the left and I've got Pamela here in the chat. How are you doing, Pamela? Good to see you again. Yeah, it's a really warm day today. I think it was about well, nearly nearly 40. Got up to about 36 or something degrees. So, guys, I want to just work through this scene and while I'm working through it, I'm going to describe what I'm doing, some of the decisions that I'm making. You know, I haven't painted this scene before and honestly, it is a really big challenge and mainly because there's just so much going on. There's so much going on, especially to the center of the scene. You know, it's not a good photograph as well. I think it's, uh, you know, got a good, decent light source, but I've, you know, I snapped this photo pretty quickly. You can see on the right, there's one of those skip bins. I'm going to have to cut that out completely and detail some of those figures a bit more in the center of the scene. Maybe put some figures in the foreground as well. So let's go ahead and start off, and I'll probably approach this right from where the buildings hit the ground. And now in, in the scene, it's about, in the photograph, it's about uh, more than a third of the way through the scene. I want to make the buildings a little bit taller, uh, I wish I had angled the camera slightly upwards, actually. But the, the next best thing you can do is, of course, just change uh, change it as, as, uh, as you paint. So I'm putting in that, what should we call it, that line where the bottom of the buildings finish off. Okay, right there. And I actually don't need the, the center part of that line. I just accidentally thought I was drawing in the horizon line. This is not the horizon line. This is just an indication where I want those buildings to finish off. And the horizon line is actually, it's, it's in the middle of the scene, um, in the middle of the paper, in the page. But because, uh, because I've changed the bottom of those buildings, I'm going to have to just shift it over a little bit lower, somewhere like that. Okay, might have to switch it, uh, you know, change it up a little bit later, but let's just see how we go. And probably the biggest, most important thing we want to get right is uh, basically these two buildings. Okay, and you've got uh, the one here, uh, obviously running all the way from the, le uh, you know, this larger block. Okay, so I'm going to bring this all the way up to the top. Okay, and, you know, for this particular scene, you know, I'm going to be painting quite large here. Pamela says, uh, yeah, it's pretty warm, warm here too, only 27. Yeah, it's uh, we're finally getting a proper summer here in Melbourne, but, you know, from what I've, what I saw in the news, it's going to be stormy tomorrow. So we normally get that kind of, you know, storms and then it, and then you get a bit of sunshine. So... Anyhow, um, this is the side of the building, and this is the kind of the laneway going all the way into the back. And uh, I'm gonna try to also get in the side of this building here. Okay, let's also work on these little shop fronts and things like that. You can see them all going all the way up here. Uh, uh, yep, all the way to the back of the scene. Okay. If you think about it, all we're drawing here, all we are drawing here 
is uh, basically a box. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing here on the right hand side. All right. So we've got uh, this bit coming up here. And, and we've also got this sky coming through the center, this the blue sky just all the way out in the background. And this is an interesting sort of scene because you've got the the corner of this building running all the way down. It's like kind of the ledge up there, cutting across like that. Okay, there's windows and all kinds of stuff up the top of this building. Okay, but uh, all this is going to be simplified down, hopefully. Well, we have to simplify it down. There's no other way to paint this because there's so much so much going on in here but these buildings as you can see they really they really form the basis of the painting and so you got to you really got to pay attention to this part and um make sure you get in these like pillars and things like that correctly okay and like i said i'm actually increasing the uh, the height of these buildings a little bit as well and here kind of that block just finishes off roughly about here yeah there we have it okay that's like a pillar basic kind of pillar like that um you know, if anything, we could even reduce the reduce it down a little bit because it is it is it is a bit tall. That's for sure. Um, a bit of this perspective, these perspective lines as well, running down the sides of the the shop fronts and things like that. Here, uh, you know, there's like a balcony or something here, and here we've got like some kind of uh, shade there of a shop like a coffee shop a lot of darkness underneath this building in particular here okay interesting interesting kind of outlook uh okay but that pillar kind of goes down a bit further like that okay good now this skip bin let's forget about that bin we don't need that bin there I am going to uh, continue just sort of detailing some bits and pieces out here. But the, the main thing I really want to focus on before I get distracted are these buildings here to the left as well. Okay. Like that, the side of that building. And you've got these sort of rectangular bits, as you can see there, like shop, part of the shop. Uh, shop fronts, I guess. They're the sides of these shop fronts. Um, anything that you can use to just catch a little bit of light. Okay. And then, of course, you've got the actual doors and stuff running down the, uh, running down the sides of the buildings. Okay. Um, this needs to be actually... I'm going to need to increase the height of this. This is not this is not the right size. It needs to be uh, these little shops just need to be a little bit taller um, so that everything makes sense. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Uh, let's bring it up perhaps to here. Okay. Another sh part of that shop front there. Okay. Good. Cuz the people are going to be roughly like this height in the in the back of the scene, you know, here are a few people. I'm just putting in a few examples of some figures. I'm going to have to just redo them afterwards, but you know, because of 
because the figures are, you know, half, basically halfway to these, to the top of the shop fronts, you know, if I make, if I don't make the shop fronts tall enough, they're going to look tiny. These, these people are going to look tiny and we don't want that. Okay, so here is like another rectangle. You know, you'll see in this scene, little rectangles, little, you know, little blocks and stuff. And that's what you need to draw in. You know, the the temptation is really to, like, focus on all the tiny little details. But all you need to do is just look at the shape of what you're drawing. You know, this is some kind of, uh, what should we call it? Like it's one of those olden, uh, yeah, side of the building. I don't know. It's kind of like uh, the old facade of the building. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Little bit of this. Little bit of this. I'm not trying to be perfect in how I'm drawing this as well, guys, because I, I am literally figuring this out as I as I draw. Um, Underneath, what have I done here? That, there we go. All right. That can be like the under part, I suppose. Here, the sides, and then that's that's the under underside of this uh, this facade of the building. Okay, I don't normally like to use erasers, but that shouldn't be there. This mark as I was kind of like trying to suss that suss this edge out okay so that looks all right bit of that tiny bit of that shading underneath to remind me that's going to be darker um, same with this side of the the building actually that's going to just catch on a touch of light perhaps you know, uh, what do we have here? There's all these intricate details. I don't need to bother with that. You know, the, the storefront, the name of the storefront, doesn't matter. Just make sure that you've got a few little shapes and things in here. And uh, we do have a bunch of people watching. How are we all doing? I can see about six of you on YouTube, another four people on uh, Facebook. Today's going to be a special one because uh, this is a photo I literally just took today when I was out in the city and I'm painting on a large, going to be painting on a large sheet of paper as well. So this is twice the size that I normally draw and paint on. So I don't know. I just felt like, I just felt like painting a larger scene today. Okay, so the opportunity you know, with, with painting these larger scenes is that you can also get in more details, of course. Um, let me see if I can do something here. This ledge, is this ledge that goes all the way, all the way into the back. Uh, I haven't got it quite um, straight, but, you know, that ledge all the way in the back like that. Okay, that's another ledge behind, like this. That's going to catch a little bit of light as well. And around it, you can see these like rectangles, like squares, you know, like the shop fronts. They've got all their bits and bobs around. Um, and, you know, you've got these also these lamps, which are quite interesting. I'm going to get those lamps in right at the end. Okay, and remember, this is just a quick little, meant to be a quick little sketch, okay, because we don't want, I don't want to do all this, draw in all this detail, only to have it all uh, basically done with afterwards once I put the paint in, but it does need to have enough detail in there to... Um, yeah, it doesn't need to have enough detail in there to guide your hand, guide the paintbrush. You know, this especially, there's some kind of shadow. Can you see just behind this uh, building? There's a bit of shadow there cast by that building. That should go in a touch more like this. So the line of the shadow 
needs to be quite clear um, for the painting. Uh, I like, I really like this shadow, how it comes right through the center of the scene, ends off, you know, off center, just left of center, this shadow, okay? Um, don't worry about that bin, of course, that's a, that's a mistake, that's a, something I didn't want to get into the photograph. Uh, yep, let me know how, um, there's a bunch of you, I can do see a bunch of you watching along, but yeah, if you have questions during this live demonstration of what I'm doing, and I hope some of you are painting along because this is a really good opportunity to ask questions. Let me know down in the chats and I'll get back to you. And even if you're just watching watching along tonight, say hi and yeah, let me know whereabouts you're, you're watching from as well. I do check the chats periodically, uh, but sometimes I do get distracted when I'm concentrating. I'm not the best multitasker. In fact, I'm terrible at it. But... I'm getting better. So here are some of these little stools or whatever, some chairs inside the shop. You see, inside the shops, you can really imply what's going on in here. You know, I think, is that a person there? That could be a person inside the shop here, you know, doing something. Why not? I'm just making stuff up in here, uh, inside that shop. And these could be maybe some steps. I'm just going to imagine some steps going up into that into that shop, I don't know. Okay, something like that. And, okay. We are getting there, we are certainly getting there. There's a window here. There's a large window here, just above this um, shade up the top, which I'm gonna just pencil in like this. Oops, come on Darren, let's get that in more accurately like that. Okay, the, it's very difficult to actually determine where the edge of this building is. It's uh, where the side, the front of it starts. I'm not going to bother too much with it. I'm just, uh, I think we'll be able to, the view will be able to figure this out because a lot of this is just going to be, uh, especially on the left hand side, it's just going to be a little bit darker. Okay, I'm going to have to imagine some of this stuff up the top as well here because. You know, I didn't point the camera further up, so you, so some of this stuff I'm going to have to just improvise. Like I put in another window up the top here, you know, over over here on the right hand side. You know, we've got uh, this balcony or something here. Where is it? Jesus, uh, is like a. I really get confused sometimes with these balconies and the perspective on them. That look all right. Just checking. Not really. Let me just have a little look again. The angles of these are so crucial. I think they're more kind of rectangles. If we look at them, they just look more like rectangles that are almost like on no angle at all. They're just almost like sitting on its side like that there you see the bottom of them um there's just so much stuff up there okay put in a few guiding lines coming up through the top as well okay i'm gonna emphasize perhaps this the edge of the buildings as well more Okay, to come up like roughly here. I've already drawn it in, but I just want to emphasize it with a, a touch more confidence as to where it is. You know, here I'm just going to put in again some windows. Let's just a bit of guesswork, a bit of simplification as well in this top section. But I do like this area here that I've drawn in that's going to be quite a central part of the scene okay uh, it has to catch on a, a bit of that light it has to just catch that touch of that okay really important um, as the lights coming through there Look at Jennifer 
from Ballarat. How are you doing, Jennifer? I've never, I don't think I've had anyone from Ballarat before in these workshops. Welcome. And you might, yeah, you might remember this, or you, this scene might be familiar to you since you're from Melbourne as well. How's everyone doing on Facebook? Drop a message in the chat if you're watching along. Uh, yeah, I'm really taking a bit more time with the drawing here because there's a lot of complexity in this scene. And I actually like the fact that it's a complex scene. This is one of the reasons why I've chosen to paint it or, should I say, torture myself with this one tonight. Because uh, it's been a while since I've actually sat down properly and done one that's more detailed and, you know, it it may not even turn out that detailed once we get in with the painting, but I'm certainly going to try to make it more, more detailed. And, you know, also walking you through, as you can see, the steps that I'm taking when I'm making decisions, you know, I put in a bit more of that cafe, as you can see, um, the side of, let's get that side of that uh, cafe in and that shade there on top. What have we got here? We've got like this, um, it's like a balcony there. Balcony there and up the top, there's a bunch of doors, bunch of doors. These are going to be good, getting some darker, darker sections up the top there. Extra interest on the front side of this building. This, uh, this says a center, I think. So this is uh, actually, it's actually called Center Place. Center. I find it very tricky to get in like lettering in these particular scenes without it looking too stuck on and unnatural. Um, there is a window up the top here. Let me just pop that in. It's a window here. You know, there perhaps there's a window to the right there and another window outside of that scene in the corner. Um, I don't like that. Just two windows should be good. Still can sort of see the, the line work on the top right. Trying to move around. Yeah, I'm trying to move this this paper around a little bit because I, I've zoomed this camera out completely and unfortunately I cannot get the whole scene as it's just too it's just too large. I've raised the stand all the way up. Um and yeah, let me know how the audio and the video is as well. Do let me know. If there's any issues, uh, especially with the with the video, as you know, as I go on as well, because sometimes it does unfocus, and I have to change things up, refocus it. And Jennifer, even Ballarat, warm, warm and wet. Oops, I'll read that last. And we are usually coldest part of Victoria. Yeah, it's funny. I've never been to Ballarat for like since I've actually lived in in Melbourne I do want to go sometime just have like a interesting history with the the gold rush and and stuff like that um yeah but welcome thank you for joining how did you find my my channel by the way it's good that YouTube's sending it out to some more Aussies most most of my viewers um you know Pamela's also I think Pamela's from New South Wales but most of my viewers are from the states or from uh, the UK actually, so yeah, it's always, always good to see some uh, some other Aussies in here. Okay, let's uh, continue on. I'm getting distracted. Um, yeah, so this, you know, these buildings, as you can see, there are these kind of, uh, as you can see, these like rectangular bits and pieces. Uh, you know, this, like it's an air conditioner thing here. You you just pick and choose what you want to put in here. Now, I, I'm a bit pedantic at times, and I can get really focused in on details. Uh, I used to paint, like, much more detailed 
than this, but it just became so frustrating. So, uh, yeah, I find this is a better, uh, you know, a, a kind of mid ground where you can get in a indication of what's happening, but it still looks like what you're trying to imply. And, oh, this building here in the background. Now, this is interesting because I, I actually left the larger space in between because I thought in the photograph it just didn't do it justice. Like, there, there's this building in the background right through the center. Um, let me just see. Where can we put it? Maybe, like, here. Finish it off, like, here, perhaps. There. It's, like, a pretty tall building. And as you walk through this, as you walk through this laneway, this actually turns into, like, an arcade and there's stores, there's jewelry stores there, there's some candy shop, there's a, there's a place that sells socks. Uh, I've never been able, I kind of think, actually, no, I have been up um, on some of these other floors as well. That's a really fun thing to do. Sometimes if I, if I get a bit of time, I just like to do a bit of exploring and see what's actually up there. This is small businesses and sometimes there's nothing up there at all. There's, you know, you just go up the stairs and it's completely empty and it's just abandoned stuff. So yeah, this, this old building here just is, is, uh, something I want to put in there because it bridges the scene together. And not only that, the windows are, are nice and kind of, you know, you've got this bit of blue running through them, which is going to help to kind of reflect the sky. And this is what I mean when you're changing things around in a scene, you don't have to, you, you don't have to, you know, go exactly by the reference photo because actually I don't think the reference photo does this building justice at all. It kind of looks a bit boring. You can you can barely see that building there in the background. So I'm putting these windows kind of like off, off uh, on a tangent a little bit to kind of you know. I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but I don't I don't want to make them look too perfect. That's the main thing, like kind of exactly lined up, just kind of a bit off kilter. In the top of that building, it's kind of see it's like like a point out there, isn't it? Like a like a rooftop, a darker kind of rooftop. And yeah, I would say, yeah, that building, you could almost make it a bit lighter, but it still blends into that building to the right. But it's also going to help to create a darker background, slightly darker background than this building to the left here. Hey, doing Irwin. Irwin is here from Transylvania. Good to see you. Good to see and hear you, uh, see, hear from you again. Jeez, it's getting late, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, this is a pretty classic, classic sort of, I'd say even a very stereotypical Melbourneian scene if you get over here sometime. But to be honest, Transylvania sounds way more interesting to me. <laughs> um, uh, we've got Kelly Lua from Shell Harbour, New South Wales. Here you going, Kelly, another Aussie here as well. How long have you been painting for? Um, all right, look, you know, we've been doing a lot of drawing of these buildings and I'm, you know, I'm taking my time as well. I'm definitely taking my, my sweet time here. Um, you know, you do see some of these more little square, square blocks, circle, circular thingos like this, like this, you know, and then of course you have some of, then you have some of these like lights that come across. Look, this circular light here that just comes across the scene there. I barely noticed it before and I was looking at it, I was like, what what is this what is it doing? What's it even suspended on? And there's actually two you see it attaches to the to the left and right side of the building, kind of precariously, in fact. And there's just so much it's a bit annoying. Like this it's not a uh, what you would call it? It doesn't just attach straight on. It's quite intricate. You know, you've got these cur a bit of a curvature in the in it as well. So, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, add it on a little bit. But at the same time, if I can just simplify this down later with the brush work, I'm going to do that. Yeah, because I just know I'm going to over 
I'm just going to over exaggerate these lights if I'm not careful. There's even a up the top here, like a like an arch where you're just sort of joining. Can you see it? Just this arch that's just joining on the two sides of this laneway. I mean, this is the the little details you notice afterwards when you actually try to draw the thing. You know, something like that kind of marking the entrance okay and uh, i don't know whether i'm how in how much detail i'm going to get that in I'll leave it in the top look it says this is actually called so jennifer's asking what lane weight is this is called center uh center place center place this is off uh where is it i think it's near little collins street yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, near, like quite close to Elizabeth Street. If you turn right, if you say we're walking down this particular scene, we turn right, that turns into Elizabeth Street. Yeah. Um, and you've got, you know, the, the kind of stenciling of the center place up the top there. You know, I, I think I'm going to just leave that for now. Yeah, I might put it in afterwards, but I can't really be bothered right now to... Uh, to write it in there now let's let's skip to these next sort of bits and pieces the figures and all that so we've you know one thing to really keep in mind you want to put the heads of the figures roughly on this horizon line you know not really a horizon line but you, you know what i mean just on right at the back there okay so even the bigger figures so i'll draw like some bigger ones up closer okay and i actually took a few different photographs on my phone because i thought to myself i'm going to definitely need to get in some some other people uh, walking around in here. Uh, what do we have? We've got this guy. This kind of uh, fella walking around. And maybe I'll use this to put him in here closer to the front of the scenes wearing a cap. Wearing like a white cap. Head like that. Shoulders. Now this is a figure that is going to be closer to us in the foreground and walking towards us as well. Because there are no figures actually currently present in the foreground of this scene. It's looking too bare up in the foreground. And so this is why I will put in this fella here to make it look more interesting okay yeah. let's get the forearm maybe like a forearm on this side the yeah. forearm here let's redo this okay the hand Basic sort of hand, and the thumb there. He is holding onto like a bag of some sort, like that, like a duffel bag. Yeah, something like this. Let's get in the bottom of his shirt. He's got his hand in his pocket. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's got his hand in his pocket. Um, oh, come on. This is putting him right, kind of in the center of the scene. Uh. You don't have to do this, guys. This is this is like a a choice I'm making because I I am really trying to practice painting more detailed figures. You don't have to do this because this then covers up the whole center of the scene. It really draws attention to the center part of the scene. Okay, but I think it is going to help to also bridge the gap between this shadow and the light running through the center of the scene. I really have to be careful though that I'm not eliminating all the light and taking up too much space for this guy. So yeah, I, I don't know. It may or may not work out, but uh, I'll certainly try and just see what happens. Okay. Shoe. Shoe here or something. Just walking into the front of the scene. Oops that okay quick 
a really quick kind of figure. Uh, the head, I just need to rejig a bit. Something not quite right with the head. The head and the shoulders, I find, are probably like the most important things with the figures because it starts to, yeah, it basically just... that's how you identify the essentially that there is a person here just the sh the head and the shoulders of a person like that the head can be a little bit smaller but if you make the head too big it just starts to look like um it just starts to look uh funny okay good person here in the front that's enough detail i'll figure the rest out uh, as we go, but I did have another photograph like a guy here, like a kind of look like a guy just walking, you know, in his white shirt into the scene. Just reverse that around a little bit. Leg at the front, leg at the back. Oops. That doesn't look too good, actually, that that figure, but... Too much rubbing out, too much rubbing out, Darren. Uh, let's just simplify this down. Normally, I'm really quite quick with these figures, and the more I sort of... Fiddling around with the figures, I find that the more I sort of stuff it up at times. Okay, so he's kind of walking into the scene. All right walking into the scene uh, there and notice again all the heads of the figures they are on the same point of the horizon line out the back I'm going to get this person kind of walking almost like walking to the left or something like that this person here just maybe standing up right um, you know some smaller figures out in the back as well it's quite a actually a real crowded sort of day even though it was so hot um you know just these bunch of people just all crowded around um you some you know there's also a girl here there's oh like this is like a couple here looks like he's gonna put his head there another girl there she's taking a picture she's taking a little picture maybe a bunch of tourists like that okay you see her back um she's wearing like a black dress simplify this one down like that just a black dress and uh legs <laughs> little legs there at the bottom not much i don't want to i'm getting as you can probably tell i'm getting a bit tired of drawing so if i just quickly do this get the rest of these figures in and if i just I really want to start painting yeah there we go leg but you know I can get a bit careless sometimes if I'm not careful and just scribble, <laughs> literally just start to scribble. So I don't want that to happen. There's another person here walking into the scene. You can see her arm, um, too big, like that, arm to the side. Um, she's wearing some like denim, like a denim something. Oops, leg there, one leg in front like this. We've got another lady here, also in the back, like that. Uh, um, leg to the back, one leg to the front like this. Good, good, good. Okay, that's enough kind of uh, detail, I think. That's enough kind of detail. Um, the shadow is all going to be coming off on this sort of interesting tangent to the left. Same with these ones out in the background. This is going to be interesting. Um, you know, the question is whether I want to actually put some figures in here as well, like another, maybe I put in another person here. Uh, yeah, could try. Just have someone maybe standing on the 
edge of this building. Maybe he's kind of waiting there for someone. I don't know. Just another figure standing on the edge there like that. Not doing much. Okay. Holding maybe a suitcase or something. Okay. Uh, like that, you know, sometimes you get tourists that just come around here and they'll have their suitcases, you know, hanging around like that. Tell a bit of a story. Okay, some more of these guiding lines, and I, and I think we're going to get, really just get, get into it. Just, let's just get get uh, stuck into it. Oh, this building here, I do need some kind of, some kind of window or some kind of details. There's not much on the left side. Of the buildings it looks very bare i'm gonna to have to invent another window as well going all the way up um we've got who else do we have here we have kelly uh kelly says painted for a few years really love plein air painting love the adventure of it yeah you know um if you can get past not worrying about, about people coming up to you which was something that i struggled with initially it's one of the best ways to practice but still I, i'll definitely i don't think i'd pull out my my easel and start painting here in the middle of this uh especially in the, in the heat today <laughs> but i usually go to like a park or something like that and on the edge a corner of a of a street a quieter sort of street and i'll do some sketching there okay so um We've got aggressive koala here as well in the chats. How are you doing? Welcome back. Okay, so let's 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 get started. Let's just get started. I'm happy with the lev the level of detail I've put in here. I can keep on going, but you know, um, I'm gonna. I've already ended up very drawn for like an hour, so or close to an hour, anyhow. Now, like I said, part of the painting is kind of cut off at the top and the bottom, but it only by like a centimeter or so. Not, yeah, it's not really a big deal. But the positive is that you guys can see today, you can see my entire palette. Well, most of it, at least the mixing areas. Maybe bump the brightness up a little bit like that. Okay, so let's get in some colors and because we've got quite a large sheet of paper I can now use my large round brush which I never pull out in a lot of my paintings because it's just it just takes up too much room so I'm putting in a little bit of lemon yellow but also a little bit of quinacridone gold okay I'm just sort of just sort of testing it out on the page first but we want the whole side of this building essentially a lot of these these buildings to just be a generic golden sort of looking color uh, so i'm putting in a lot of water through this as well lots of water so we're talking about you know 10 percent paint all right there i'm gonna exaggerate really gonna try to exaggerate some of this light as well guys that that is not um you know especially on this top part of that building okay you get lots of light here that side of the building but you don't really get that kind of um light here on this darker ledge Okay, but I'm, I really, I think I'm going to have to do that because that ledge is just going to help to kind of draw out all the rest of the details, the lights and the darks. These buildings here in the background, you can see, you know, that building, that one building. I'm just going to go around, join this up to the right hand side. Check this out. Just cut around some of these signs as well. I'm, I always sometimes get too overzealous and end up just painting everything the same color but it's important to leave some bits of white in here because yeah then it's just easier when you want to put in some extra colors and so uh, later some extra colors like blues and things you, you you know you're gonna have a much easier time uh, doing that 
um, oh, I realized I didn't have my, 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 um, I think I zoomed out, so that's why it looked kind of funny. Okay. Yellow ochre, a bit of yellow ochre. I want to just use some duller yellows here for these buildings. Okay. Uh, okay. Like that. Right. There are some kind of reds here as well, like a really vibrant red. Oh, didn't want that. Pick up some, we used a smaller mop brush with some orange and red mixed together. And just put that one in like that quickly. There we go. Get a sharper edge for it. I'm going to leave that. I might actually create, just make this whole thing kind of like this reddish color. And at the same time, just cut around, leave the white. Oh, see, I've gone too quickly, but that doesn't matter. Uh, leave that kind of a bit of white or something up there. But at the same time, it's kind of a bit too, a bit too much of a contrast as well. Uh, to do, Darren, what to do? I think I'll leave it for now. I can always darken it afterwards. Okay, so around the edges, this is where I'm just picking up, you know, I've got two smaller mop brushes. And this just allows me to, uh, as you can see, detail a bit better. Because I've, oh, do you go from this right here in the, I was testing this bit out and I've left it uh, more quinacridone gold, bit of yellow ochre, bit of white gouache. I want to put in, make sure that this um, combines on with the ground. Okay. So we really need to make sure we've got enough light in the ground. And that light kind of joins on from the top wash, as you, as you see the top wash of all this stuff going on in the buildings, the lighter warmth in the buildings, it just joins on to the ground like this. All right. In fact, the front of these buildings we can... I can just drop in some color, same kind of warm, warm colors. I'm basically I'm just putting in all, all the warm, all the warm, and all the light of this entire scene. It's the same process I follow for every scene that I paint. There are some darker bits as well. Look, I'm just picking up a bit of grey. I'm just dropping a bit like that. But I, but for the most part, I actually want to leave a lot of those darker values till later. Okay. So maybe, you know, at most I'll drop in some, a little bit of this greyish colour, like this. But it is going to mix, as you can see, with that previous wash. And I'll still put in some of that yellow. Okay, like that. Oh, it's so much fun using this larger brush. I've been painting on a much smaller scale recently, and I've really just, I've been missing just using broader brush strokes and just having a bit more freedom to play around with these bigger brushes as well. You don't often get the chance, chance to do that when you're working on smaller scale smaller paper, bits of paper when you're sketching especially. There we are, just this basic warm colour there in the ground. Okay, the light in the scene is actually probably more white, but I am altering it a bit. Into this building we go. And inside of the building anyway like bits and pieces cut around some of the tables and chairs and stuff like that for later 
the tiny, the little bits of white that you leave in are going to be very useful afterwards. All right. So what else do we have left here? I mean, this building here in the back, I think just needs to be finished off. I'm going to work on that a bit more. Okay. It's still like a warmish color, like yellowy color there in the back, kind of like a, I'm using an off-white color just to paint in that. I've even dropped in a little bit of gouache back there as well. Okay, I just want that all to blend and mix, okay, seamlessly with the rest of the buildings. Uh, maybe a bit of more golden color running through it as well. I've lost some of that saturation. Okay, a little bit of that running through in the background. The top of the building is like some there's some grayish value. Let me see if I can just drop that in quickly like that. Oh, didn't want that, but no problem. It's still going to be dark anyway, that building. Okay, just a bit of that. Something there. All right, the edge of that building. Um, while we're at while we're at it in this section of the scene we're going to do the sky we're going to put in some some uh, bits of color for the sky uh just want to re-wet that it's dried funny so small mop brush or flat brush let me actually pick up a flat brush why not let's try flat brush this time uh, And um, let me just re. I reckon I think I'll do is re wet the road a little bit. I think it should be probably um, be a bit more neutral colored in areas like here. Just drop in a bit of gray in parts of it. Okay. The rest of it doesn't really matter all too much because I'm going to go over the top of it in grey anyway but this part here um, yeah I think a little bit of darker grey greyish value in here would be good um, thanks for the suggestions uh, Serena but it doesn't matter it's, it's not a huge deal um but yeah, the sky, I'm going to use some cerulean blue. Let's drop that in. It's a really vibrant cerulean blue that I've got. Using the flat brush for just simplicity's sake. Flat brushes are great for outlining the edges of buildings. You've got like rectangular, square sort of shapes and things like that. Oh, these, tell you what, there's nothing out there that will get you in a crisp line like this. Get that right hand side of it in. Can't really see this part. Leave a little, see how I've left like a little bit of white on the edge as well. Um, I'm doing that so that the color doesn't, yeah, doesn't run into the rest of the building. And of course the windows need a bit of color in them as well. I'm just mixing up some cerulean blue with a touch of gray on the palette. Just give it some kind of color in there. In fact, these windows have probably like a warmer color reflected in them. Just some kind of something to take away the white. You know, this building here, we could even, yeah, we could try to put in a bit more blue. Yeah, whatever. Just a bit of something in there. That, good. Um, all right, the figures. The figures we're going to put in colors for for them and 
it looks like you're enjoying you're enjoying uh watching along in bed serena yeah the drawing took me ages to do this this one took me often i'm spending more time on the drawings these days than the actual painting for whatever reason but this one i i did feel warranted an extra bit of time because it's a larger scene it's larger size than i usually paint it's twice the size so therefore just requires more planning it's more detail you find that the larger you paint often the more detail you have to try to put in there where in you painting small you actually you can eliminate more detail and get away with it so i'm going to put in some bits of color for these figures and uh what that that example that person that i was painting before where is he I have a picture of him on my phone. Yeah, he had like a blue shirt on. And that makes, you know what? That makes sense. Some kind of cool color shirt. You know, this is actually a bit of teal. A bit of teal. All right. And this is going to make sense because we've also got all this warmth in the background, on the ground, that kind of thing. So some of this is actually going to, it's actually going to help to, to contrast better uh, with the warmth in the background. When you combine warm and cool colors, put warm and cool colors next to each other, that's what you get. Shorts, I'm just putting in some darker color for his shorts. Um, and bear in mind, at this stage of the painting, we are not getting in details. We are just putting in some basic colors, okay? I'm going to get some... Yes color in for this girl here that just some basic skin tones okay I normally what I use I use a mixture of red brown and yellow for variety of skin skin tones you can get most of them in that way you can also mix in a bit of neutral tint or ultramarine blue for darker skin tones for simplicity sake I'm just gonna make them all pretty much the same okay it's kind of like a pinkish color I suppose at the moment uh, and this guy I'm gonna put in a bit of brown Okay, a little bit of brown, a bit of blue. Let's have a look. What do we have here? Good. And remember to keep things, you know, keep things very nice and transparent in this wash. Because you don't want to um, yeah you don't want to over uh, over detail or create um, create too much contrast in this level in this area okay so I'm going around and this is what you do essentially you just put in little bits of color for the figures um the heads you know just doing the same thing for a lot of these figures head there put this phone away get distracted uh, and the clothes you know you can just put in different colors you know, this one here kind of got in like a bluish gray color like that okay I don't really bother with the legs just yet. At the moment, I'm just trying to get in some basic values uh, of the clothing and, you know, a bit of cerulean maybe. Let's get some cerulean in for this person here, maybe wearing like a blue shirt there. Okay. A bit of darker color for this one perhaps there, there. Okay, but still, you know, keep it transparent, guys. Keep it transparent. 
Um, you know, there's someone here just in this shop. A little bit of transparent color running through there. Doesn't look like much. You know, I thought I'd maybe put in a person there as well. Um, just a little outline of a person like that. Probably might, it might change afterwards, but yeah. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, that person, there we go. It's looking good. Looking like something. Anyway. Okay. Uh, the buildings out the back, I do want to put in a little bit of this blue color. Can you see? This is one thing I really liked about this scene. Just the, I noticed a flash of blue in the windows. So I'm just picking up this cerulean blue that I've got and, uh, you know, getting in a bit of that in the windows. You don't have to paint the entire window. You kind of just touch and go in areas like this as well to make it look looser. Just do want to make sure that it comes out sharp. The edges look nice and crisp. Out the back there, like that. Um, okay, okay. I think we are we are getting to the point where we can dry it off. I think we can just dry this whole thing off and put in the put in all the shadows. And um, yeah, let's let's uh, take to the hair dryer. Alrighty, dried off, that has all dried off. Now, what I want to do is start working on, uh, basically start working on the shadows, okay? And I'm going to do this quite methodically from the top to the bottom. And using a series of brushes, I'm going to be using a, a flat brush, a round brush, a synthetic round brush, a synthetic flat brush. And I'm going to be using a small mop brush as well for detailing. Uh, just cutting around a bit better. So starting from the top. Now, we see the building here to the left has lots of light on it. But this building in the background there, it's actually, it's actually a little bit darker, like especially down the center. So I want to imply that. Let's, I think I'll, yeah, let's, what are we going to do, Darren? We're going to start off with the building out the back, I reckon. I think this will be the best, um, this will be the best bet. So I want to mix up like a warmer gray color. A little bit of red in this gray. A tiny bit of red and maybe a little bit of yellow in this gray mix that I have here. And I didn't notice, see, at the bottom of this building, it gets kind of darker. Yeah, so this is where I'm bringing in some of these, these grays. 
these warmer grays okay but um check this out as well i'm also cutting around this building to the right a touch okay and, and mind you this building to the right is also going to be darker than the one to the left but uh, yeah just start off with this one let's see how we go like that maybe a bit more yellow in there tiny bit of yellow and uh quinacridone sort of yellowy color yeah that looks better something like this there okay a bit more gray and you know note see how i sort of just leave areas out as well leave parts of the previous wash there so that it kind of looks uh, more interesting so we go up to the top i'm really just gonna darken a little bit but for the most part i want to sort of leave some of that uh, yellow that original yellow in there so i'll just kind of smooth it off a bit up the top there you know like that there's this top part of the building i'm going to indicate that quickly like this maybe all right i'll probably have to redo that afterwards but that looks okay for that background building okay i'll leave that as is for the time being i'm going to mix up some other color other color meaning uh, some grays some general neutral colors so a bit of blue a bit of a bit of ultramarine blue a bit of perylene red and a little bit of yellow ochre um, and this is just to create a darker value now this building to the right hand side it does have to be darker there's no way around it it has to be darker but I don't want it to be like too dark as well that even makes sense but you know the shadow is coming in from that side of the scene and so this building is technically under shadow but because you've got so much light on the left it's also rebounding uh, it's rebounding and um, lighting up that building a little bit so you've got some incidental kind of light but uh, I can we can simplify this down a little bit this is just a, a mop brush that I'm using okay a little mop brush and simplify the side of that building down this okay and again like see how i'm just leaving out little bits of that previous color in there as well that little bit of previous color okay more blue that looks too warm kind of pinkish color um, bring this down this whole pillar I'm gonna just darken off okay like this but down the left hand side of the building you know as you can see it's mostly dark but um, I'm still leaving a little bit of that yellow showing through in areas again that's for the purposes of indicating some incidental light that's reflected bouncing back from the building to the left hand side okay and we'll carry some of this over to the right side as well you know check this out you've got this like little balcony just indicate some of that quickly Let the brush just blend see how i'm just blending everything together so that it just looks like one wash of color okay now the the building to the left is where we can actually start getting serious with some darks some proper darks in there i'm just picking up whatever darker color i have left on the palette and uh you know for example this balcony or whatever just quickly Putting in some small details. Um, the rigger brush 
probably be helpful here. Make a brush. Let's have a look. Should have painted from left to right first, actually, because now my because I'm right-handed makes it a little bit trickier to do this. Uh, you're just basically going into this building, and where you can see maybe some tiny little bits of darkness and things like that, like the like the, the windows, and you know, just drop in a bit of color. Oops. See, it doesn't have to be perfect, but um, indicate some of this stuff and the perspective, a little bit of those perspective lines as well helps. Okay. And this is where you have to be really, really careful because underneath this building, you see here, this is where I wanted to preserve some of that light. So that's going to be dark under here. Like that. All right. And here. There. But around this uh, side of the, the building, this block or whatever, it's going to be just light running through there. Okay. Bit of that light catching on. And this then turns into the side of this building. And where's my mop brush? Okay. And again, working along like this tiny little details in the light like that. See, just like little windows or, or what what have you out in the back there this needs to be darker just need to pick up more dark paint that this is like a window I've got to put this one in like here yeah. okay that's a window bit of shadow underneath parts of it as well but the main thing is you've got the back of this the front of this building sorry which is uh, supposed to be darker and we're going to need to make it darker so that the side of that building looks lighter just that side there okay just uh, trying to simplify this down and just get it over with quickly. Drop in a bit more brown maybe in here as well just to create a bit more of a change in value. A bit more interest in there. Okay. And all, all the while I see I've just preserved that the side of that building so that you've got a bit of something there. Um, but as we move down into the background, this is where I'm just going to pick up some more color and start to darken off a bit at the base of some of these buildings and, and what have you. Join it all. Try to join some of this stuff together. Okay. But the big thing is we also want to leave in uh, yeah, some of the light hitting the sides of these buildings. But underneath them, I will darken a bit. Okay. Okay. 
that. Okay, especially around the figures, if we see these figures. Uh, I just want to darken a little bit around them so that they will stick out better. Okay. Just lighten off a bit of that there. It's gone too, a bit too dark, that section. Good. Big thing I'm trying to do here is just to bring out some extra kind of contrast around some of these figures. Uh, even if it means darkening a bit more in some of these buildings, uh, that kind of thing here in the background as well. And if you end up making some of these areas too dark, don't worry because we can bring them back we can use a bit of gouache later to bring some of that some of that color back afterwards so I'm getting a bit of like a shadow or something for some of these windows going back into that area quite a bit um, and fiddling around in this section because it is an area that is very complex and I want a few different colors running through there. I also want the figures to really stick out. So here is a, that guy with the cap, the white cap here in the foreground. And again, a little bit of darkness around him, around the cap. But uh, not all the way through, as you can see, there's some of these buildings. We can just put in a bit of that detail for the side of the building but leave a lot of the light on it um, the building to the left I need some more color in there you know whatever it is just some color running through it I can just simplify this down as well. That's going to be better for me, I think. So cutting around these figures, just using some neutral tint. I'm being quick with this at the moment. I'm getting impatient, but I'm trying to fight the urge to just keep on, keep on with this. Um, I have some purple as well. I'm mixing in a bit of purple to uh, get in a bit of contrast these complementaries you know we've got yellow and we've got purple directly next next door uh, looks fantastic but keep in mind these this figure as well i'm going to need to probably darken down a lot because they're going to be in shadow okay except for these ones maybe here Flat brush, dark color, neutral tint. Okay, let's get in that shadow cast underneath the building. Oh, more flat brush. It's going to help me this in this section to the back. There. Yeah, this shadow on the ground here, that's what I'm trying to get in, just to... Uh, 
cut around the figure. Okay, quite a sharp looking sort of shadow as well. And, uh, let me think, um, yeah, the shadow is still kind of cast kind of behind, kind of like a bit behind the, look at that, the grass, yeah, the shadows are cast directly behind, I can just indicate, Something like that for those figures. Like that. And then, yeah, I'm just trying to think, making this, making the shadow pattern like a little bit more, a little bit more uh, dramatic is what I'm thinking of doing actually, just you know, this one here in the foreground as well. The sh cutting around the shoes. No. Okay. And we have got a big shadow running into the ground, like a gigantic sort of shadow. Um, I'm going to pick up some more paint. There's still a lot of work, I think, in this scene. There's still so much that I have to do, I th you know. But there's maybe like the legs out the back, just some darker color. Of some of these figures here, here. Like that, just to outline the legs of the figures out the distance. Uh, a little shadow underneath them as well, like that. Uh, connect the legs together. Smooth that off a touch as well, this, this black, so that it doesn't suddenly just start. Yep. Okay, these figures as well, just need to indicate the legs more kind of difficult because they're still in the darkness. Uh, these ones as well, tricky, but a little bit of shadow there to the left. Softer shadows, I just want to make them kind of wet and wet. Okay, that will be enough. Darkness for the legs of this figure here, this this person just standing by the side of the road. Um, good. Good, good, good. Um, now, of course, the large shadow running all the way to the bottom of the scene. Uh... I reckon I'll go with the medium mop brush for this. And I'll mix up maybe like a purplish color. It's kind of tricky because that figure I've already painted in. Cut around the legs a bit, like that. Okay, and the front of this, of course, the front of this building also needs to have maybe a bit of light, a bit of darkness there too, but uh, let's not bother too much with that just yet. I want to get in this 
large shadow here in the foreground. Uh... Oh, this is a tricky, tricky scene. Really, really quite difficult actually to to just make everything connect and look fluid. Okay, uh, we'll keep on working on the small details now. Uh, let's work. Ooh, what should we work on now? Maybe the shadow here. I'm going to go, I want to go a bit more darker with everything now here. Uh, here. Yeah, just underneath this section, you can see there's like a shop. And some extra darkness here is going to be so helpful like this it's just neutral tint i'm using here actually is nothing special yeah these could be tables or whatever like that but i'm joining that up also with the some of the stuff here in the foreground what is that don't know what that was. I was drawing something there, but I've, I've now lost, forgotten what that was. Okay. Some of this will seep into the bottom wash. So that doesn't matter. I'm happy for it to just seep into that area a little bit and perhaps like actually form a bit of a, you know, like a downward reflection thing. Like that. Don't know. Just an idea. Just a downward, maybe, reflection of that shop. Uh, yeah, you know, it might actually stuff it, but... I'm thinking we kind of need need some of that showing through. Um, even with these figures, like... Just trying to bring things to life with these, with these shadows, but uh, it's not quite working out just yet. I think that I think I need to go darker in some, in some other sections and add in those details. Let me go back to that reference photo of this figure. Darken under here more for like uh, to get in like some kind of indication again of the light um, light source underneath the, the shirt. You know these two sleeves as well. Um, here there might be like a shadow underneath the. This bag that he's carrying across, you know, to his shorts, um, you know, a bit of, bit of detail on the left side of his hand and his arm, uh, like that. Okay, um, girl in the back, black dress. Um, 
really need to go darker with some parts here. With some of these figures, they're just not sticking out enough, unfortunately. Um, the legs, especially, of these figures, some of them just don't look like they're coming out enough. Just put a bit of brown for her hair. That. Guy to the left. Looks like he could be wearing like a could be wearing a cap. Don't know. Just connect that on. Simplify that down. He's wearing a blue shirt. And you can see his arm kind of like going around as well. Yeah, the figure out the front, the figure out the front, not too kind of happy with it at the moment, but uh, we'll see how we go, we'll see how we go. I, I really think some, some darker values in the buildings is going to make a big difference, but I just need to find myself that, uh, yeah, just to... The brush, maybe this one could do it, can do the trick. The difficulty with these figures as well, they're also in the dark, they're also in the shade, so they really don't have much uh, business being, you know, having too much light on them at all. So, a little bit of something to the left is going to help that, but maybe they're going towards the light, so they're getting a bit of that light sort of catching onto them. Okay. Now, just I'm going to play around with this a bit more. These darker spots behind the buildings and all that. I will just, I want to darken, up, darken it yet another time. Because the, it, at the moment, it's just not connecting so well. It should be a shadow connecting everything out the back. And a darker shadow as well, like this. That's going to maybe look a bit better and bring out the figures more because the figures just look too... And you can't really see what's going on with them. Connect the leg up to the ground there as well, like this. Okay. bit more detailing underneath bits and pieces the shop fronts see so just starting to just add in a bit more detail for them uh Well, Jesus is a tricky one. This is definitely a tricky one. Um, Bit of a task to tackle, especially at this time of the night.
just trying to darken the building a little bit more in parts to uh, I guess bring out the the buildings to the left and right kind of what I was doing in the beginning but you know I'd lost the lost that sharper sort of edge like here and here okay it is slowly very 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 slowly starting to come together but um I'm not quite happy with it yet there's a, a lot of things that I want to still modify add in some of those little details like the arches and stuff like that as well uh but you know thinking in the interest of time as well I don't want to spend too much time on that but see look at this little bit of sharper detail on that building that there and maybe I could put in some no oh, he's holding a bag here I forgot you put in the shadow of that bag like this Okay, I'm going to give it a quick dry, and then we're going to put in some final finishing touches and bring it all together. Okay, rigger brush and a bit of dark, a bit of dark paint, and I'm going to dry it off a little bit and just start to maybe put in some of these little like guiding lines that I had put in before on the buildings. Okay, in areas like this. Okay, on the ground as well, maybe we could get a few kind of marks going in like this as well. Just on the ground to mark out the perspective a bit more. we do have you know these things that we were talking about before like the uh the lights and stuff like i was in the middle of drawing this one simplify 
just trying to simplify this one. It's so much going on. Maybe just something like that would be easier. Like that. Uh, underneath part of it there. Another one. Yeah, I just want to simplify the shapes of these, like the or well, the arms that kind of connect it to the buildings. So I'm not here all night. They just get smaller as you can see out in the distance as you keep on going. Rigger brushes are great for this type of stuff because you just can be uh, as light as anything. And uh, the rigger brushes, again, it just allows you to put in these final finishing touches. There is this, again, this sort of thing that goes above the top of the whole scene. It's kind of like this grayish, you see it, this like grayish arch. Yeah. Connecting the buildings up. Like that. It's a shame we don't have any of those those kind of like uh, lamps, those olden day lamps around on this on the on these uh, streets on this uh, laneway. I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to like bring out some little details as you can see. Just dry brushing, just dry brushing. Okay. Yeah, this one turned out a lot looser than I uh, than I'd anticipated, but I think it's looking okay. If I were to do it again, if I were to do it again, uh, what I reckon I would have done is just simplified down a lot of this structure even more. Just paint the whole thing dark, have like a silhouette that just joins up. The three and focused on the light shapes uh, in there there's a few things we can we can still kind of play around with here and that's basically the gouache um, to just bring out some bits of like highlights and things like that on the figures uh, I'll just put in some hair and, and what have you on, on a bunch of them first before I go in with the before I just go in with the gouache straight up, I want to indicate some hair on some of these figures out the back, maybe. Um, got some white gouache um, just to make it all come together. Okay. Go here. Actually, I'll dry it off. Okay. 
bit of white gouache on the hat of this figure out in the foreground. Um, he's wearing a white hat anyhow. And, you know, I might actually get in some white gouache for like a shirt of a figure out the back uh, as well. And get in a bit on top of these lamps. There, just a bit on the arms, maybe on some parts of the arms. Not really a big deal, but a little bit of that. Um, heads and shoulders of the figures. At the back, like this. Mm, a bit here. These figures out in the f coming out around the corner. Mm. And the shoulders of this figure here. Yeah, definitely came out a little looser than I thought, but um, it was an interesting scene. It's very challenging, that's for sure. I've not painted this large for a long, you know, like a pretty long time. Um, I think I will finish this one off. Um, yeah, I'm very mixed about this one. I, I think I had had fun like trying to figure things out. It was also it was also really challenging. Uh, trying to sort out this composition and thinking where the light and the dark areas are and uh, you know the challenge of just combining everything together like having that shadow that large shadow shape that I always talk about that just joins and goes through I think just due to the size of the paper I got lost about halfway you know but um, yeah probably my favorite part of this scene would be around here maybe the edge here of those uh, figures going around the corner uh i could keep going and detailing and all that kind of stuff but i, I think i'm just going to leave it leave it as is but uh yes i think that's it for today i'm going to end it for tonight it's really, really late actually i've been painting for a long time thanks for coming along and i will see you all next time but uh oh also check in the description the video description as well there is a link to my uh patreon if you want to support me and also to some of my courses um see you so i'll see you all next time